Hello, my fellow nerdlings. Today, I want to talk about SSH tunnels. And tunnels are arguably the thing that people say is the most awesome feature of SSH. And I agree, but unfortunately, it's also one of the more confusing aspects of using SSH, especially when you talk about forward and reverse tunnels. Now, usually you hear people say forward and reverse tunnels, but actually they're local and remote tunnels. And I think using the proper terminology makes it a little bit clearer with um, how they actually work. Okay, because it has to do with where you're reaching into the tunnel uh, as you're using them to access a remote service or a remote port on a remote service. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard. We're going to show you exactly what's happening with my poorly drawn scribbles. And then we'll actually use local and remote tunnels and show you what they do and talk a little bit about why you might be super excited about using them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a local tunnel. And what that means is that here we're sitting right at our local workstation. And that means that when we reach into the tunnel to get to a remote service, we're going to be reaching in from our local side. So here I am on our workstation. And basically here, let me get a there. Maybe this will work better. So we're going to establish an SSH connection through the Internet into an SSH server far away. Okay. And we've established this connection and we're going to make a tunnel. Okay. We're going to make a, a local tunnel and it's going to start. So the opening of the tunnel will be here and it's going to go through this SSH connection that we have established. And I should have made it a little bit wider. It's tough to draw in. Okay. It's going in there and what it does on this end, it connects to whatever we tell it to. In this case, we're going to say, okay, I want the opening of this tunnel to connect to local host 127.0.0.1 port 80. So I want it to connect to the computer that we're SSH into on this port. And I want this port to appear locally on this side at whatever port I tell it to. In our case, it's going to be like port eight thousand and basically so if we connect to our local computer on port 8000 it's going to magically connect through the tunnel over here to this computer's local host on port 80. and so why this is really useful is let's say you're running a computer that is only listening on local host like sometimes when you install a service it will only listen on on local host it won't listen on the public ip address of the computer itself. So you can't access it from the outside. You can only access it from inside. Well, if you do it via tunnel, you are inside and we're accessing this remote computer's local host, 127.0.0.1, this local host address, we're accessing it way over here uh, because we're mapping that port. But again, we reach through the tunnel this way from the local side. So that's what makes this a local tunnel. So we're going to do this, but this is what's happening. Basically, we're mapping a local port to a remote IP and port on the remote server. Now, a remote tunnel, this is the thing that people often refer to as a reverse tunnel. Uh, this is a little bit more confusing, but just remember uh, how I talked about it's defined by where you reach into the tunnel. So in this scenario, we are on the workstation still, but we are behind a firewall and there are no ports forwarded through the firewall. Okay, so nothing can come in. There's no ports exposed. So what we can do is from our workstation, we establish an SSH connection. Again, it's going to be this tunnely thing. All right, we're going to go through the standard SSH port and we're going to SSH into the remote server. OK, but here's where it gets funny. Instead of reaching in over here, we're going to reach in on this end. And specifically, we're going to use port 2222. And so what we're going to do is when we establish this connection, we're still creating a tunnel. It goes through the SSH connection the same. But what it does is connect to this computer listening on an exposed port. So we connect on the remote side of the connection. And on this side, what we do is we hook it up to our local host on port 22. 
Now, if you see the benefit of what's going on here, that means our workstation is now exposed on the internet via port 2222 from this remote server. So that means you can bypass this firewall without ever needing to port forward into it because we've set up this tunnel remotely to this server. And then this server said, okay, I am going to forward all the traffic on my personal port 2222. And I'm going to send the traffic that connects to here to this spot on the internal workstation. So that means when we set it up this way, somebody anywhere on the internet here will be able to connect to port 2222 on the remote server. But what they'll actually be doing is logging into SSH on this workstation behind a firewall. So they're really, really, really awesome and powerful and can be kind of sneaky, but they are a little bit tough to get your brain around. So think about where you connect to the tunnel, where you reach in, right? Here we're reaching into the tunnel from the remote server, and that's why it's called a remote tunnel. Now, I just have the arguments laid out here really quickly. And basically what we do to set up a local or a forward tunnel, but we're going to call it a local tunnel because that's what it is, is use the dash capital L flag. And then the first half, if you will, of the the argument here is where we access it or where we reach in and it's going to be our local IP colon the port that we want to. And this is in a different color because if you don't specify the local IP that you want it to listen on, it's just going to uh, assume that you want to listen on localhost. Okay. And then the port, another colon, the remote IP, another colon and the remote port. And this is what you end up getting, right? If we listen to this port that we specify, or we connect to our local port that we specify, we will actually be reaching the remote IP and the remote port that we specify in the second half of this tunnel argument. And then a reverse tunnel works exactly the same way. You just have to think about what you're accessing, right? Where you reach into the tunnel. So it's dash capital R for remote tunnel. And the same thing, you specify the remote IP or by default, it'll just listen on localhost. We'll talk about that too, because we have to make a server change if we want to make it accessible to the entire internet. But anyway, so the remote IP colon remote port where it's going to be listening on the remote computer, and then another colon. And we say where we want the tunnel to end up, which is going to be local to us, like our local IP address and our local port. All right. We could also, like, instead of just 127.0.0.1, we could also give access to an internal server that we can reach, like a private IP, like 192.168.1.100 or something, and the local port, like port 22. And then we could give access to this server from this remote IP address on the faraway server that we specify. So it's really, really powerful, really cool, but let's actually do it so it makes a little bit more sense. And I know... I know, I know, I know. It's like, oh man, I almost have it. I almost understand what you're saying. So hopefully if we actually do it, it'll finally click. And if not, look through this video again, because I promise once you get what's going on, it's super, super awesome. But let's actually go and set up, first of all, a local tunnel that is going to expose a port on our local machine that will actually be addressing a local or a remote a uh, server, in our case, a server in Austria. Okay, so let's check it out. So we're here on just an Ubuntu virtual machine that I have set up. And what I wanna do is take you to uh, kermit.brainofshawn.com. This is my server that is actually in Austria. Okay, so this is the response. It's just a simple page is usually where I start my homepage from, uh, but it's kermit.brainofshawn.com. And it's the regular website that we're going to address. Now, what I wanna do is create a tunnel over SSH to a remote server and then be able to access its web server from our local port. So what I mean by that is, let's do SSH dash capital L for a local tunnel because we're opening the tunnel here. We're reaching in from our side and we're going to specify the local port 8000. Now remember, 127.0.0.1 is assumed, but then we can do port 8000 colon. And now where is the other end of our tunnel going to hook up to? Well, from the side of our Kermit machine, it's going to be 
localhost port 80. Okay, so on our side, we want to listen on our local host 127.0.0.1 port 8000, and we want the other end to connect to or hook up to the local host on Kermit's side. I could have put 127.0.0.1 here as well on port 80. So that should mean that our local computer will act like a web server on port 8000 that connects to port 80's web server on Kermit. And then we have to specify where we want to go. Of course, Kermit, press enter. I have SSH keys all set up, so it should automatically log in. Okay, so here we are, we're on Kermit, but now if we go over here, because that tunnel is set up, if we go HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 8000, you can see I did this before because I tested to make sure that I got my, my commands right. Boom, we get the exact same page that Kermit is serving out, but notice we're getting it from our local host port 8000. So it's the same page, but we're going through our local tunnel by connecting here locally. So that's usually the easier one of the two to understand. So let's actually get out of here. So exit, have to hit control C because there was actually a tunnel established. So I had to hit control C to exit that SSH session. But now let's clear the screen. Now we're gonna do SSH dash R for remote tunnel. Okay. And what we're going to connect, remember we start with where the tunnel opens, like what's going to be listening. And that's going to be 127.0.0.1. And we're going to say port 2222. Okay. So that's the remote computer in, in Austria, the Kermit server is going to listen on port 2222. And it's going to connect to the, our local host. So 127.0.0.1 port 22. And we tell it where we want to connect to. So I want to connect to Kermit again. And what we should do is we should get our Kermit prompt again, because again, I have those SSH keys set up. Okay, here I am in Kermit. But now if we were to SSH and we can specify the port we want to connect to, and in our case, it's going to be port 2222. And I want to connect to local host, press enter. It's going to ask us if we want to connect and say, yes. What's the password? I'm going to type in my password. And all of a sudden I am on Ubuntu Mate, which is our local VM that we're logged into here. We have logged into this computer by SSHing to an exposed port in Austria, if that makes sense. All right, so let's get out of here, exit. See, I'm back in Kermit and the connection to local host is closed, but again, it wasn't really the local host, right? It was going through that remote tunnel and we connected to, let's get out of there again, to Ubuntu Mate through that remote tunnel by connecting on that end. Now, here's the thing where we can get super duper sneaky. You'll notice that I kept using local host because by default tunnels will open and close on local host. Okay. So when we did a remote tunnel that started in Kermit, it would only allow the opening, you know, the listening part to listen on local host. So somebody from the outside wouldn't be able to use our super sneaky port. However, if we change it so that we allow gateway ports, that will allow external connections to port 2222 in Austria to magically go through that remote tunnel and access our server that is completely behind a firewall and has no ports forwarded into it. Because remember this remote tunnel is established from inside our firewall. So we don't have to have a port forwarded in if we establish an outgoing SSH connection and then we start a remote tunnel so that we we started the connection here, but the on the other side is the opening of that tunnel. We can reach back into the network. That's where it gets really sneaky because you can still allow SSH access inside a network that's completely firewalled off. Anyway, we do have to make one change to the server uh, configuration on Kermit, on a remote server to allow that sort of sneakiness to happen. Now, by default, you can do this on local host like we just did. That is, that's not breaking any defaults, right? You can, as long as you can connect to Kermit, then you can re-SSH right into uh, the local host that you, you know, redid on port 2222. But if you don't wanna have to log into Kermit first and then SSH to the local host, you can actually do it from the outside and I'll show you what I mean. So like I said, we have to be in Kermit. So SSH to Kermit. 
and then sudo vi etc ssh sshd underscore config this is our ssh daemon config file all right our password and now gateway ports no this is the default so what's what's commented here shows you what the default is so i'm going to add a line gateway ports yes and what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to expose that port 2222 on more than just local host so i'll show you what that means for us we also have to we could reboot the computer or we could do system cto uh reload ssh okay so now that should be activated and let's get back to our local computer here so we're logged into our local vm right here and now we're going to be even sneakier we're going to say ssh we're going to set up that remote tunnel so it's going to listen on that other side but i'm going to specify 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0, 0. I want it to listen on all of its network interfaces and that that setting that we just changed will allow it to do that on port 22.22. And I want it to redirect to my local 127.0.0.1 port 22. All right, hopefully this makes sense. Now I'm saying, again, we're just connecting to Kermit again, but we're gonna say I want the remote tunnel to listen on the remote server on all of its interfaces, localhost and its public IP addresses. 0.0.0.0, .0 just means every one of your interfaces I want you to listen on. And I want you to listen on port 2222. And then whatever connects to there, I want you to hook up to our local computer that we're running this from, so our Ubuntu Mate computer, to the local host port 22. And so we're connecting to Kermit because that's the server we want to make all this happen on. So press enter. And now we, again, are logged into Kermit. We could SSH to localhost on port 2222. However, if we were to open another window, all right, so now, if we were to say, remember here, we're back on outside of Kermit. We're not logged into Kermit at all. We could say SSH dash P. So port 2222. And I want to connect to Kermit. Okay. Not localhost. I want to connect to the exposed port 2222 on Kermit all the way over in Austria. Hit enter. Say yes. We've never connected to that port before. And now if I type in my password. Now, here we are on Ubuntu Mate. So if you were right now watching this live while I was recording it, you would be able to connect to my internal virtual machine that has no ports forwarded to it. You would be able to connect to it over port 2222 on my remote Kermit server in Austria that is publicly exposed to the internet. Now, I feel like I got complicated enough, but just know that you can manipulate that where it listens and what it connects to on both things. So you could have your local tunnel that you start and it listens locally, listen on all of your interfaces on your local machine. So you could do that at 0.0.0.0. .0 and then any computer on your internal network, like somebody in the laptop next to you on your on the same private LAN, could connect to your local opening of your tunnel. And whatever you had connected it to on the outside, they would be able to access too. And same thing with a remote tunnel. You can have the opening and the where it connects to. You can change those to a local host or listen on a specific IP address on each computer or use the 0.0.0.0, .0 which means all of my interfaces. I want you to listen on all of my interfaces. And then, um, yeah, you can redirect your tunnels like that. But the big thing I want you to take away from this is the difference between a local and remote tunnel. And if somebody calls them forward tunnels and reverse tunnels, they're just talking about a local tunnel and a remote tunnel. The direction is where they get that forward and reverse, you know, because it listens, a remote tunnel listens on the remote end and a local tunnel listens on the local side. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I encourage you to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, 
be kind. If you have to watch this video a couple times, that's okay. Play around with tunneling because once you understand what's going on, it's awesome. And you can put a bunch of them in a row. You could do multiple dash capital L's or multiple dash capital R's and, you know, have a whole bunch of ports listening and, and redirecting and multiple servers. It's just super cool. So anyway, uh, that's SSH tunneling. I hope this made sense and I'll see you at the next video.